Hello everyone, welcome back on Techies on Wheel. Today we will discuss about RPA ROI, which is return on investment. We will look onto what is a return on investment and how to calculate it. So we'll discuss in detail about uh, ROI. Let's get started. Let's first understand what is return on investment. Like the name itself, the full form itself of our ROI suggests that whatever we are investing, what is the return we can expect out of that investment? So let's see that if I have an idea for here, say for automation, I want to incorporate automation in my organization. So I'll have to invest certain amount of money for incorporating that automation in my organization. It could be the cost of the infrastructure, the tool, the application we are using, and the developers, the coders, um, the time, the other resources will be investing to achieve this automation. All these things at the moment is the investment which I am doing for incorporating the automation in my organization. So, of course, if I'm investing in something, I'll, re I'll expect that something I'll get profitable out of it. That could be in terms of cost or compliance um, or anything else which I'm seeking forward, which will eventually turn my expected result into reality and I'll be happy investing into it. The other could be that I'm not actually sure on to what is going to be the return of it. I am not, I have no clue about it and I am, have not even calculated it. So what will happen that even though we have invested quite a lot of amount and energy into our uh, automation journey, it could be devastating and it could lead to decrease either in terms of our profits or any other challenges might get encountered because of improper consequences and return onto it, uh, which we haven't calculated or ignored at the beginning of the uh, automation journey, um, which will eventually lead to a sad result. So this is where at the time of your beginning of your automation journey or of a process you want to automate, we have a particular metrics we, which we call ROI metric, which we used on a high level to estimate what could be the expected benefit or return we can uh, expect out of this investment. So like I told, return on investment uh, for RPA, we have a ROI calculator, which we'll be showing and representing here, which is the one which I have referred to uh, which is suggested by automation anywhere. And with the help of that calculator, we can determine that what kind of cost savings we can expect out of this implementation of the RPA. This ROI is determined on several factors, which is, of course, when you are investing something on automation, you will be saving manuals hours. So you can invest that manual person who is actually doing that particular process as of now manually for something more useful. Then savings can be determined basis the error reduction. Of course, with the manual intervention, there comes a lot of manual errors, which can certainly be reduced when we go ahead with the bot implementation or the RPA implementation. Uh, then we have savings from the productivity gain. The, uh, the HD can be improved with the help of robot and the productivity gain can be evident. Uh, the savings from the business agility, uh, then the savings from the customer uh, and brand improvement, st customer statistics and brand improvement, that could be one of our saving parameters. Then the savings could be talked about in terms of improved compliance and data government. So governance, so we know that with every process there comes a compliance and data governance and there are a lot of penalties attached to it. So this can certainly be one of the aspects of seeing the savings out of the investment in RPA. And also, generally, we uh, have to look onto this return on investment on year and on year basis in terms of a long run, say three to five years usually, which we consider. Why we are saying that is that whenever we are looking for the ROI, if we just go ahead and look for the first year ROI, this might not be much evident considering there are a lot of investment which we are doing here. Uh, that also comes as a cost of incurrence and this might not reflect your numbers quite, uh, quite uh, absolute. So it's always suggested that you look onto it in the long term, say th minimum three to five years of forecast journey. Um, and when I talk about the cost, the cost could be your infrastructure cost, automation cost, license, maintenance, or several other costs, which you might have uh, uh, done at the 
the uh, for or for the automation journey so the expected roi and actual roi can still be different when i'm talking about this roi calculator we are just assuming and we are forecasting that what can be the return on investment which we can expect out of this journey but reality could certainly be different sometimes in certain scenarios so again this roi metrics can be considered as one of the parameters or analyzing uh, analyzer kind of thing which we can certainly keep in mind going ahead for our future uh, investments that what were the shortfalls or what was the pit or lags which could be improved to improve our roi in future so this is how this is the crux of the return on investment what it is and how it works now let me show you the actual metrics of roi which we are referring of automation anywhere here and how to be calculated so let's have a look on to here. So like I told, we have a certain metrics which we have uh, or we can create as per our organization need, which we can play around to determine what kind of return we can expect out of this investment. The one I'm referring here is the one which uh, is available over Automation Anywhere website as well. Uh, and the areas, the details we are considering here is the annual figures which we are taking consideration so the first parameter of savings we are considering is the saving of manual hours um, this is the number of hours and the several sub parameters onto it which we can mention and certainly this can be modified as per your organization need like i have been to, uh, telling in other for other metrics as well so here let's have a look around that we are considering number of process this is the only one process which we are considering then the number uh, on average each process the number of hours it saves it could be it could vary as per process to process then the number of times the process runs in a week so if say it's a weekly process so it will be the number, number would be one if the bot is running once but say if there is a kind of triggers or something which initiate a process again or bot gets triggered again and again based on certain parameters or rules then of course the number of uh, process run would increase definitely so this could be the number out of extracted out of the basis of scenario to scenario then the total hours saved in a year so say uh, it could uh, and as per the formula here it's the multiplication of the entire uh, uh, the details of the b4 b5 and b6 uh, multiplied by 52 so say 50 uh, and the of course the formulas could differ here again um, as per the parameters which you are incorporating here and then there is a cost per hour so this cost is your manual cost per hour or any other value which you will get from business onto the cost which they are currently paying on an hourly basis or spending for this process on an hourly basis so this value would get multiplied to this number of hours in total hour with total hours saved in a year and this will be the savings for your manual hours here similarly we'll look around the other estimated uh, savings like the quality uh, for the error reduction say for every error there is a penalty which is say of 100 of dollars and assuming that there are n number of hours for manual uh, work say there are four uh, errors which is the minimal or average of error which is being encountered so with the implementation of bot this can certainly be minimum uh, neglig it would be negligible and will turn out to zero so the savings here would be in multiplication of it uh, so again this is uh, uh, this is all on assumption basis which i am taking here the formulas can vary from process to process and organization to organization as per your requirement so to, your total savings would be the multiplication of the number of errors saved uh, multiplied by the cost per error then we have productivity gain so similarly for the productivity gain again if say your productivity has increased by 20 percent so you'll calculate it basis your number of hours saved and uh, it will multiply and give you the result here uh, then you have uh, around the business um, agility, which is ag again the availability of your process or the application or data. Uh, what, uh, what is the kind of improvement or increase you are seeing by implementing these automation? These could be several factors which will rely on to 
onto basis um, you can calculate the business agility and this is again something which is condition to condition basis if it is not applicable in your process you can certainly remove it and if there are certain other parameters you can incorporate it um, then moving ahead we have uh, the uh, uh, saving spaces customer satisfaction and brand improvement this is again basis assumptions and the support to your customer uh, you know, is showing or the number of redu reduction in customer attritions or loss revenue if any such you get from sales team or anything required you can certainly mention it or count it over your savings then you have compliance and data government governance mostly all the projects all the processes which we uh, follow has certain certain regular uh, certain compliance or governance set around it which comes up with a penalty and cost so that could that should be considered here in terms of savings as the board with the implementation of board these things would certainly be in place and your governance and compliance would certainly spike up a lot um, in terms of adherence to it so your total savings would be some of all those aspects parameters you are considering here so your total savings for a year one for all process will be it and then you need to see on to the year on year basis that what is the saving it is increasing and how these formulas are getting incorporated i'll show you but before that let's have a just quick look onto it that we have other cost as well which we were we talked about the implementation cost of automation so this we call the estimated cost of solution any rp solution comes up with the license cost whatever tool you are using say automation anywhere ui path through prism everything come up with a cost of license or bot license that you should consider as a cost of investment then the infrastructure where you are deploying the bot what kind of infra would be required development infra or uh, any kind of uh, development and deployment cost which is incurred to your solution then the maintenance and support cost for the Uh, solution and the training cost of it so any such expenditures you are doing to get your automation uh, of this particular process incorporated that would be your cost you would be investing or the investment cost of the process and the sum total of it would be the total cost of solution you can always uh, uh, show it in terms of the uh, any pictorial format or representation you would like to but now again going ahead and talking about the year on year basis of savings we will see that we have certain parameters onto it and we are always calculating it basis uh, basis the annual benefits so for pre start there is no savings as such or something like this but on year on year basis these are the cost actually which we have calculated in our earlier roi analysis input sheet which will reflect here and this will be your total of it which we were talking about then you have annual cost so the, before the start of the at the beginning of the process there would be a pre start cost which again is the software cost maintenance or training and services cost which you have invested this would not be a part of your saving this is the investment but whatever you savings you are doing the first year savings will not have or will deduct the amount of your investment to reflect here that what is the actual savings you are doing out of here so this would be the actual your net present value of the uh, investment post investment and implementation of process so see for the year 1 the profit i see here is of 4 uh, 4505684 uh, dollars but the investment i have already done as a pre start is of 133500 Uh, then in year two, the maintenance cost and support will keep on going. That is where you see these values to be present and intact, uh, and these values of year on year basis will remain static, considering everything we are considering the same cost, and we are not in getting into increase of the values. Rather, we are considering consistent throughout the years. Um, however, the reduction of eighty thousand will all always be considered on the profit, and post that. this is the value which comes as a saving kit and again on to it this in the year 1 which i was talking about the investment which we have done will reduce the value out of it and will get the value which is my actual savings of year 1 but year 2 onwards i have already considered this investment as part of reduct savings so i'll not consider it and this will get eventually increased year on year basis see 
my year two savings is 370684 and year one saving was this. So this savings will be the amount sum of year one saving and year two saving. Similarly for the year three, four and five. So what I see here is that there is a 138% of savings growth. I can see uh, post investment of my uh, process, which I'm taking consideration for automation. You can always break it down on monthly basis or whatever parameters or projections you would like to forecast to your client, customers, and management. But this is how the actual ROI depends on. Again, I'm repeating that it is not certainly that whatever you are representing is actually going to be the same. It would actually be the same figure. No, might not be. There can be a number of circumstances, uh, say your uh, maintenance cost if gets increased or something likewise or any search intacts or any search amendment changes would reflect your profit percentage but this is the forecast we are showing a projection kind of thing which we are showing that this is what you can expect out of this investment and this is the return on investment which i'm talking about see now again there could be a question that why should we look upon it there is certain evidence that okay if i'm investing it would be a profit for me no, might not be. Might be the process you are considering for automation will save you only 0.5 or 5 FTE, or say not even a half of FTE. That person still needs to be indulged in your process journey. Will it make difference for him? And if I'm not re reducing his work, even if I'm reducing a bit, but it is not making evidence changes or reflection in profit in my strategy, is it actually worth investing this much amount for this automation? So these are certain kind of decision making which needs to be done before blindly going ahead and starting the automation journey for that process. It might not be feasible or best fit for automation, but again, there can be certain other parameters which might be of help that if you are looking for automation in aspect of your compliance or security or other aspects, you can certainly again go on to with your automation. But the point here is that all these evidence measures should be taken in consideration before making a decision uh, um, that whether you should go ahead with automation or not, because I have heard a lot in industry. And this is why we always keep on hearing also that automation has not benefited me. Automation is not what I expected. So it's always good to evaluate what I'm trying to achieve and then make a decision based on it. So. So this was all the crux of your ROI uh, in terms of what is ROI. I hope it would have been clear and why and how to expect or project your return on investment in RPA journey. What next? We will look upon the solution design document, what it is and how to make it. So till then, stay healthy, stay happy, keep learning and keep growing. Thank you, everyone.